G'day Australia, good morning from Washington. Hey, have you heard the news? In Alaska, what does that mean? The race to 270, well that is now over. Donald Trump wins the state of Alaska and as a result, Donald Trump is once again going to be the President of the United States. The Fox News decision desk can now officially project that Donald Trump will become the 47th President of the United States. The former president's comeback will be complete with a win in Wisconsin. How extraordinary. It is the greatest comeback in modern political history. To find an example of it, you don't have one this century. You don't have one last century. You've got to go back to the century before that when they had the 18 in front of the years that were being counted down. Now, there are many images, many stories, many things to tell you about, many things that you've watched happen all the way through the day. And I've done my best to play that straight news bat because, as I said, all day long, you don't want to rub people's face in it. That's not cool. It's not OK. You've got to be a good winner because you've got to be paying attention to the people who are feeling the loss. But we've got to soak the moment in as well. This is an incredible moment in history. It is an incredible victory for people who had been ignored, who had been called garbage, who had been told that their views were not in polite society any further. And they roared. And these were the same people who four years ago sacked Donald Trump. The same people in the same swing states who have now rehired Donald Trump. And in an evening of extraordinary images, a campaign of images, when I think we all felt exactly the same thing, July 15 Australian time, that when the bloke got shot, his reaction was not to crumble, but was to fight, fight, fight. And his call all the way through the campaign was fight, 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 vote, 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 and now he gets to say win, win, win. You need to have a look at this photo because this is going to be one for the history books. This is a photo of the exact moment Donald Trump returned to the presidency. He's backstage, waiting to go on stage at his supporters in Florida. His son took the photo as he's watching on to the numbers being counted and then the result being declared. To have that image before us, to have an insight into the most personal of moments is a perfect example about in many ways, the open book that is Donald Trump and is his candidacy. At times it can be ugly to read, at times it can be difficult to read, at times it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's always an open book. And the idea that uh, this was not some sort of filtered special image that was curated by a campaign, it was a son who took a photo of his father, his father fighting back to the place where he will now lead the free world. I, I find it unbelievable. And as we were sitting back watching all of it happen, the inevitability coming minute after minute, state after state, hour after hour, in lefty land, where they thought there was no chance, where this was the basket of deplorables, when this was the people who had been run out of town, to see them coming back, not quite coping. I think oh, yeah. when it's all said and done, what you're going to see is a huge divide mm -hmm. over people who are college educated and not college educated. Black voters came through for Kamala Harris. White women voters did not. Pure Project 2025 in miniature in Florida and that kind of extreme sort of extremist right wing fascist type government in Florida. Does that make it a more attractive place? Mm -hmm. Thinking about the people who are not a part of anybody's elite who are hurting tonight. Um, uh, there are African-American women who know a little bit about being talked down to and know a little bit about having their economic dreams crushed, who tried to dream a big dream over the past couple of months. And tonight they're trading in a lot of hope for a lot of hurt. And that may be true, certainly for African-American women. The idea that there was on the verge of a potential first female presidency and a first female president of colour. I, I, I get it, OK? And what I'm saying is not about those people. But the reality was is that in many ways uh, the people who they turn to for information have lied to them. 
have lied to them about the chances of what was happening in this election. The New York Times polls that we've talked about you know, day in and day out, when you actually dug into the detail, 80% of people had made their decision about what they were going to do in the American election months ago. So it didn't matter what happened with the comedian at Madison Square Garden. It didn't matter necessarily whether Trump had a good day on the trail or a bad day on the trail. They had made their choice. And they had made their choice because the government that they hired to replace Donald Trump did not deliver for them. They saw a man who, whether many people like it or not, was a man who had been tested over and over again from courtroom to the media not even treating his candidacy as one that deserved to be listened to about what he was promising. Like every day, and I've been diving deep into this for months, every day he would make an announcement about, say, no tax on Social Security. Then you turn on the American news or you try to find things in the paper about it. No mention. Just a silly comment that was made by someone somewhere else because there's no possible way that Donald Trump would be able to have a message that anyone would want to hear. But of course they did. As for Trump, when he eventually took the stage, I think the best part of two o'clock in the morning, he, uh, he took to the stage and he got rid of the teleprompter. He was surrounded by his family, who he loves the most, and of course the supporters, who built a, a coalition around him that I'm going to talk about a bit tonight. Because when the left wins, they talk about how clever everyone was, and when the right wins, they, they, wins, they think that there's some sort of you know, aberration or cheat or a mistake that's been made. Quite the opposite. I'll get to that in a second. But some of the stuff that happened in the speech, just a little longer than uh, you may well hear in other places. Here's an example of him talking about that coalition, the coalition that stretches from, say, Robert F. Kennedy all the way through to the boss of the UFC. His campaign has been so historic in so many ways. We've built the biggest, the broadest, the most unified coalition. They've never seen anything like it in all of American history. They've never seen any young and old, men and women, rural and urban. And we had them all helping us tonight, when you think. And remember when he was shot and he was going to give his speech to the Republican National uh, Convention, it was all about, you know, has he changed? Well, yeah, he has. Because like every human being who goes through life, what happens to you changes you. And think about it. Millimetres from dying. The stakes of the election being if he lost, he was going to go to prison for the rest of his life. The example of him as a slightly changed person because of those events was pretty obvious in this bit of his speech too. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And now we are going to fulfill that mission together. We're going to fulfill that mission. And one last thing about his speech, and I've been thinking about this for a little while. What does the word fight mean? Now, obviously, in its worst possible sense, it's about confrontation. But I think in terms of those that have seen Trump coming or have been pro-Trump or Trump literate even for the past eight years, fight means standing up for what you believe in, leaning in on what you believe in, standing up for your friends. And in the case of somebody trying to run for national office, yeah, putting your own country first. Now, that will have its complications, and I'm not going to pretend that the sky is rosy and it's going to be, for some, a bit of a rough ride. But to me, normal people fight every day. And they fight everything from getting the kids ready to go to school to fighting the traffic to fighting their workload to fighting to stave off illness, all sorts of things. So when I hear the word fight, I don't hear conflict. I hear strength.